Hi, my name is David Emerson. I'm a long-term myeloma survivor, myeloma coach, and director of People Beating Cancer. Welcome to the vlog post, uh, essentially focusing on um, a, a question, an email that was sent to me by uh, about a two-year survivor. In, in essence, I'm, I used the post to, to do some research on uh, as now a standard of care therapy, low dose Revlimid following autologous stem cell transplant. People email frequently asking about that. So I thought it was time for me to do some, some research to, to keep up on the research. <clears throat> First, the post. Hello, David. My multiple myeloma diagnosis led to a stem cell transplant and low dose Revlimid maintenance therapy. Since June 2019, even though my doctor told me I was in complete remission since April of that same year. After the usual bortezomib, basically induction therapy, he went into remission. It's, this is important. The stem cell transplant was melphalan based. It's possible some of you have undergone that as well. For comparison purposes, Revlimid melphalan-based stem cell transplant, autologous stem cell transplant. As you know, doctors and pharmacists alike say that antioxidants are a no-go when undergoing anti-cancer conventional therapies. Some people say that Revlimid is useless since I already am in total remission. So he's asking about that. Important study. Three basic findings. Yes, and I'm, I'm pretty sure all of the studies I've read document this. Low-dose um, low dose Revlimid therapy long-term does increase long-term progression-free survival. Just to confirm, progression-free survival is your first remission, not overall survival. The same study, so that's point number one, longer progression-free survival. Two, probably slightly better overall survival, not consistent in the studies. It's very important to figure out your goals. Do I want a longer first remission or do I want longer a longer life? The third issue is really, in my mind, something that conventional oncology does not stress and should. Low-dose uh, maintenance therapy does result in much greater, a much greater risk of, of serious side effects. Uh, grade, they, they refer to those as grade three and grade four adverse events. Not just your hair falling out, not just um, nausea but these are more serious adverse events. Almost twice as many, um, and that, that depends on age, that depends on a host of variables, but on average, greater risk of, much greater risk of side effects. So my reply to this gentleman was consider low, low, low dose, it's standard. I, I know some people start on 20 milligrams of, of Revlimid. Consider 10, even 5. Discuss that with your oncologist. Also consider, consider integrative therapies. Therapies shown to enhance the efficacy of that Revlimid. Thirdly, evidence-based but complementary therapies. Exercise, nutrition, supplementation, all good stuff for your body. Your body will thank you. So, low-dose, maintenance, Revlimid, pros and cons, has benefits, has drawbacks. If you have questions, scroll down the page, send me a question or a comment, and I will reply to you ASAP. In the meantime, thank you and be well.